guys and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different but it's something that I've been wanting to do since before Christmas. So back at the beginning of December I had a phone call from my mum saying that while she was trying to get all of the Christmas decorations out of the loft she had found a box full of my childhood books. Most importantly she did tell me that she had found all of my Harry Potter books so I know that they are in here but I don't know what any of the other ones are. There was a debate going on within my family for years about who had my childhood books especially my Harry Potter ones because about two years ago I wanted them mainly because because I was meant to be reading the first Harry Potter book for my Open University course. But thank you mum for finding them and for boxing them all up and now I'm going to go through them and unbox all of my childhood books for you. Before I get started with the unboxing I do just want to quickly say I'm sorry about the lighting if it's a little bit off. I know it's not normally great anyway, I just have one little lamp that I normally clip on top of my camera but the bulb went and I had to change it and it's a different kind of bulb so I don't know if the light's going to look a little bit different. Also I'm sat on the opposite side of the room to what I normally would be and I thought the natural lighting might help the situation but it's really great and gloomy outside it's just not very nice at all so I don't know if that's gonna help or make it any worse anyway let's dive into this box and see what I've got in here oh there's a lot more books in here than I thought there was going to be oh my goodness there's loads okay I'm gonna try not to look ahead of myself and find any different ones but I'm guessing that these ones here are all of my Harry Potter books we'll do it a few at a time so if I do two at a time so first of all I've got my copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and clearly this has seen better days. I actually remember exactly why this book is in such a state as well. I remember reading it in the back garden one summer and my dad was outside watering the plants with the hose and he thought it would be funny to hose me down while I was laying on the sun lounger and he knew I was reading a book. I think he even did it again afterwards when I like screamed at him for ruining my book. I'm sure he did it again but he's completely ruined the whole book really. Like it looks like what happens when you drop it in the bath, which I have also done. But yeah, it's still readable. Although I do have a new copy of it for the anniversary edition from last year. So I don't particularly need this one, but it's nice to have my childhood copy. Then I've got Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And ah, oh, my mum wrote my name in there. I obviously took it somewhere and I seem to have tried to do my signature there. But this book seems to be falling apart a little bit as well. I'll try and be careful with it because obviously I don't want to pull the whole cover off. But that bit seems to be coming away and I don't know if yeah, the pages are as well. So I need to be very gentle with these ones. Then I've got Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This one's in better condition. Oh, and I've got my brother's name in here. Oh, it says Janae, class 12, year 6. And then it says Ellis, class 5, year 4. This is actually my book, so I'm not quite sure why I decided to write my brother's name in it. Maybe he needed to borrow it one day. Actually, I think I know when he might have borrowed this. When we were in junior school, we dressed up as characters from Harry Potter. And I think when he went as Harry Potter for World Book Day. He probably took this in with him, so he had a Harry Potter book with him. Then we've got my favourite, which is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and clearly this is very worn out. Oh, I'm also a vandal. I've drawn extra fire by the looks of things on the front cover because I've taken a red biro to the cover there. It's completely crumpled, the cover's actually coming apart, and I've completely obliterated the spine, so I can't even put that on a bookshelf now. And I've defaced it again by writing my name on the wrong page. You should always write your name on this top cover here, that's where you write it. Clearly I wanted it next to the Hogwarts badge. Then we have another Harry Potter book, and that is The Order of the Phoenix. Now these are when they started to go into hardcovers, because they were obviously getting way too big. Oh, there's a bookmark in it! So obviously I started to reread it at some point, I was on page 88 when I stopped and it ended up in a loft. And as a bookmark, I'm using a West End ticket for the Prince Edward Theatre when I saw Mary Poppins on Thursday the 2nd of August 2007 at 2.30pm and I sat in the stalls in seat P8. Anyway, I think this is probably one of those books that my dad went out and picked up for me when they did the midnight releases. I don't think I was old enough or I wasn't allowed to go anyway. Maybe it was a school night or something like that. But I can remember my dad picking up probably two of the hardback books when they came out for midnight releases. I think this was one of them. And I remember that I got woken up in the early hours of the morning and I was really disorientated. It was really dark and I wondered why on earth I was being woken up. And then my dad gave me this and said, I've been and picked it up for you. But then to be told, you're not allowed to start reading it yet. It's like, here you go, I've got you the new Harry Potter book that you've been wanting for over a year. By the way, you can't have it. <laughs> okay, next Harry Potter book is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And this one is in pretty good condition. Yeah, the pages of this one actually are really good. Clearly this is when I got a little bit older and I started to take care of my books a little bit more. There's no marks on any of the pages, the spine seems fine, the dust cover is intact. Oh, I didn't actually realise that these books had the picture on 
without the dust covers. I thought they were just going to be plain underneath. Maybe I can display these ones. It's a shame I can't display my Goblet of Fire one because I actually could have put all of these out on show and put them on a bookshelf and made like a nice little display out of them. But that one book that I defaced as a child has ruined the whole lot. And finally we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Yeah, obviously old enough to start looking after them now because this one is pretty well looked after, although it is starting to curl there, but that could just be where it's been packed in the boxes. But picking all of these out has really made me want to start rereading all of these again. I've been meaning to reread the first Harry Potter book for ages since I bought the anniversary copy last year. I've been meaning to reread it and I just haven't got around to it. So now that I have all of the books, maybe I should do a reread of the whole series. Right, I'm just gonna move my Harry Potter books around to the side. I might also have to stretch my legs out because I'm starting to get pins and needles. Ow. I work in a school where I sit cross-legged on the floor quite a lot, but that was starting to hurt there. <laughs> right, so the rest of the books, I don't actually know what to expect. All I know is that I can see a lot of Jacqueline Wilson in here, which was the other author that I read a lot of as a child, along with JK Rowling. So let's have a look at those first. Okay, so I've got some Jacqueline Wilson hardbacks and paperbacks. So I will start with the paperbacks, and there's quite a few of them. The first one I have here is Dustbin Baby, and I must admit, I actually don't remember anything about this book. I'm guessing by the picture on the front, she lives in a dustbin. And I've written my name in the front here, I've put Janae B, 7C, and 7C was my tutor group in high school, so I'm guessing I had this in year seven. The next book is one that I know I read multiple times when I was younger, and that is The Story of Tracy Beaker. I absolutely loved this story, and I loved the TV series as well. My mum has written my name nice and neat inside this one, and I also seem to have ticked off on the inside covers, clearly I was still not old enough to know not to deface books on the inside apart from having your name in it. And I've ticked off books that I reckon I was saying I owned. Oh no, because I don't own that one. I don't even think I've read that one, so why have I ticked it? See, now I really want to start rereading all of these. Maybe I'll just have like a really nostalgic 24 hour readathon and I will just read all of my childhood books or as many of them as I can. Okay, the next one I have is The Dare Game and this is another Tracy Beaker book and I've written my name really scruffily in the bottom, but it says 7C again, so another one that I probably read while I was in year seven. Again, not much more I can say about this. I loved the Tracy Beaker stories and I loved this one as well. Then we have the illustrated mum and I must admit that I don't really remember much about this either. I do remember that the mum's name was Marigold, I think. Covered from head to foot with glorious tattoos, Marigold is the brightest, most beautiful mother in the world. Yeah, so her name is Marigold. The next one we have is Bad Girls and again, this is another one that I actually don't really remember that much about and I remember the cover but other than that there's not really much that I recognise from this. I haven't written my name in it so I'm guessing I didn't take it to school. Oh. But I did deface the pages. Clearly I liked having biros around my books as a child because I seem to have drawn over a lot of them. Oh, this next one. I absolutely loved this book as a child, but it really made me cry. It was like the first sad book I ever read. This is Vicky Angel. So if you don't know what this book is about, Vicky gets hit by a car. I think it's on her way out of school, but I can't completely remember that part. And unfortunately she dies, and it's all about how she appears as an angel to her best friend Jade. Like I said, it was the first sad book I ever read as a child, and I remember crying so much when I read it, but I absolutely loved it at the same time. I think this was just my first experience of reading a book with proper depth. Okay, the last two Jacqueline Wilson books that I have here, I definitely read when I was quite a bit older. I remember reading these ones. So this is Secrets, and this was the first book that I read that was written from two different points of view. So you've got two girls in this book. One is called India, and I've forgotten the name of the other girl. Treasure. So they are two different girls, and they're from very different backgrounds, but I just remember absolutely loving this one. Again, this is another one that I would really love to reread at some point. I'm absolutely loving going through all of these books, but I'm just adding to my TBR list. And the last Jacqueline Wilson paperback that I have here, I remember absolutely loving as a teenager, and that is Love Lessons. The girl in this book starts a new school, and basically the only person she really finds that she can talk to is her art teacher, and he's quite a young teacher as well. And I just remember that she ends up babysitting for his children, and basically she loves those like 10 minute car journeys when he's dropping her back home. 
and basically she develops a crush on him and I just remember absolutely loving this book it was just so interesting especially as I was in high school at the time as well so it was a really fun time to read a book like this so those were all of the Jacqueline Wilson paperbacks that I have and then I have three hardback ones here and I can already see that the first one I've damaged the spine I remember absolutely adoring this book when I read it I was a little bit older again when I read this one and I'm sure that this book deals with domestic violence and I think it's a mum and her children basically on the run and I think they end up in like a motel or something like that and she basically changes her identity and gives herself a new name which is Lola Rose. I think that's what happens anyway. I'm not 100% sure because obviously it's been a long time since I read this. You're talking over 10 years. So I do remember really enjoying this but I was definitely a bit older when I read this one. Then we have Midnight and I think this is probably the last Jacqueline Wilson book that I read before I started going on to slightly older books. Although I must admit Jacqueline Wilson has some newer books out since I read the ones that I own and I would quite like to buy the new ones as well actually and just see whether I really like those ones and whether they were the sort of thing that I would have liked when I was younger. But I don't remember anything about this. I know that it had fairies in it, which is also given away on the back cover because there are fairies there. Oh, there are fairies on the front too. But I don't remember anything about this story whatsoever, which is a real shame and kind of strange because this was the last one I think I read out of all of these ones. Don't know why I don't remember it, but maybe I should reread this one again and see if I like it now. And the final book by Jacqueline Wilson that I have here is The Diamond Girls. And again, just like with Lola Rose, I was a little bit older when I read this one. And it's another one that I remember absolutely loving. I think this one, I can't quite remember the storyline, but it was about a group of four sisters and her mum is giving birth to another baby and when she comes home it's a little boy, I do remember that. But other than that I can't remember any of this story. So again, this would be another one that I'd quite like to reread. Okay, so those are all of the ones that I have in bulk by particular authors that I know of anyway. And then the rest of the ones in here just look like they're going to be quite random. So let's have a look and see what I have. Okay, so the first book I've pulled out is Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And again, I've defaced this one. I've put a little cow sticker in the corner there for some reason. And this says it's a novelisation based on the hit TV series. So I absolutely loved watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch as a child. It was one of my favourite TV shows. I don't remember what channel it was on. It wasn't a Nickelodeon programme, I don't think. I remember watching it after school though, so maybe it was just on like ITV or CITV or whatever it was called back then. But I absolutely loved this. It says it's the first book in a series, but I don't think, I won't look in there because I'll see other things, but I don't think I ever owned any of the other books. So I think this is the only one I ever had. But I absolutely loved this show and now I really want to watch it again. Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. This is obviously a children's classic. I don't think I own any of the other books in this series either and this is actually book two in the series if you read them in order but I absolutely loved this book my name's been written in it and I know exactly why because when I was in junior school I think I was probably in year five I was maybe around the age of nine or something like that we did a whole topic on the line the witch in the wardrobe because I can remember writing up part of the story and you used to do that thing where you got a ruler and made a border around a piece of paper and then you had your guidelines behind it so that you could write on the lines but then when you took it away it looked like you'd written it really nice and neat on a plain piece of paper. I can remember writing up a piece of this story and it had a piece about Mr Tumnus in it and I'd drawn him on the side. I wish I knew where it was because I could have shown you as well but I remember doing that and I remember reading this when we were at school and doing a lot of work on it and I really enjoyed it. Okay, let's have a look at the next book. I have Judy Bloom's starring Sally J Friedman as herself and I think I have another Judy Bloom book in here because I know I read a lot of Judy Bloom when I was younger. I think a lot of them came from the library but I think I owned two, maybe three of her books and I do remember really enjoying this one. I think she wanted to be a film star. I'm not completely sure. I remember really enjoying it, but I don't remember exactly what this one was about. Next one is Bedknobs and Broomsticks. I don't know if this is mine. It's got my name in it and my mum's written it, so maybe it was mine. I don't think I've ever read this. I've defaced it again. I've got a little whale sticker there and then obviously some that I put on and then tried to peel off. I don't remember reading this though, so maybe I should read it at some point. Okay, so next we have Little House on the Prairie. And again, I've defaced it because I've covered that bottom bit there in stickers. But I think this is probably one of the first children's classic books that I ever owned. And it's certainly one of the first ones that I ever read. 
Again though, I actually don't remember that much about this one. I do remember reading it though, I can remember it was the summer because I can remember sitting out with the patio doors open. I do remember having it and I do remember reading it, I just don't remember what actually happened when I read it. Okay, next one is Ella Enchanted, which I've also defaced, although at least this one's a little bit more subtle. I've put some star stickers down there. I remember really wanting this book when I was younger. I think I probably got this for a birthday or something like that because I remember just pestering my mum saying, I want to read Ella Enchanted, like over and over again. Obviously I read this before the film came out, so this was my first experience of this. I don't think I've ever actually watched the film the whole way through. I think I've started watching it and then like gone off and done other things and then I think I've seen the very end piece. I just love going through all of these books. I'm so excited by the amount of books I've got now but I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put all of these. The Worst Witch Strikes Again. Do I not have The Worst Witch then? Because this is not the first book in the series, this is the second. Which is very strange to only have the second one. Maybe I have more, hang on. Okay, so I have got another Worst Witch book here but I've got book two and book four. I'm not quite sure why I don't have book one and book three. See book one obviously rings a bell because it's called The Worst Witch and I obviously know the series as a whole and I love the TV show. But book three is called A Bad Spell for The Worst Witch and I don't remember that at all. So I'm thinking I probably did only own book two and book four. I have just seen in the front here I've written Janae Charlotte Brazier, class two, Miss Griggs. Miss Griggs was my year three teacher and then I've put age eight at the end of it. Oh, I've completely defaced this one. So first of all, my mum had written and it's saying Janae Brazier class two, that it had been changed to a seven, that it was changed to a 12. But not just that, where I could live with that, where I've just changed the number. No, I've obviously got a stamper from somewhere and I've completely covered the inside of the cover with ladybird stamps. Why was I such a vandal as a child? I've literally ruined half of the books that I've shown you here by like writing my name across pages I shouldn't have done or tearing spines or adding extra things on with biros and now I've done that. I'm very disappointed in myself. Spellhorn. I feel like this was one I read for school as well. I don't remember any of this, but actually this would be quite an interesting read. It does say on the back that it's a modern classic. Okay, next book is Lizzie McGuire, Just Like Lizzie. Oh my goodness, this brings back so many memories. I'm sure I have more than this. Oh, one more. Okay, so I only have two. I was expecting to like pull that whole pile out and then all be Lizzie McGuire, but I only have two. So I have Lizzie McGuire's Just Like Lizzie and Lizzie McGuire and Lizzie Goes Wild. But I remember these, Just Like Lizzie is the one where she's a supermodel. Basically, these are based on episodes of the TV series, which I also had on DVD. And again, I've ruined the spine there, all of the... Uh, paper's been ripped off. This one's in slightly better condition and I don't remember that much about this one. Oh no, I said that was in better condition, but it looks like I took a bite out of it. I've signed it inside, Jay Brazier, 2004. Okay, next one is Mary Kate and Ashley, two of a kind. Oh my goodness, I loved this show. I loved these books. I'm sure I have at least one more of these. Oh, it's this series that I have more of, not Lizzie McGuire then. I have four of these. So I have It's a Twin Thing, which is book one. Book two is How to Flunk Your First Date. Book three is The Sleepover Secret, which I remember being my favourite. And then I have book six, which is My Sister the Supermodel. So I'm not quite sure what happened to book four and five. Okay, so there's three books left in here and I can see that these two go together and these are the Cheetah Girls. And again, clearly I didn't like reading things in order because this is book number 10 and number 11. I don't remember reading them if I'm completely honest. I think I did. There's pages folded over in the middle so clearly I did read them. I don't know why I would have had book 10 and 11. I wonder if they made sense when I was reading them. And I have one last book in this box to show you and I've defaced this one as well by putting a Hello Kitty sticker at the top. And I'm really ashamed of myself for doing this because of the book that it was. And that is Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl. I'm really disappointed in myself for putting the sticker on. I think I can see where I've tried to pull it off when I was younger. I'm really glad actually that I still have my original copy of this book from when I was a kid because I said not too long ago to someone at work that I'd really like to reread that again. So there we have it. I have an empty box. I have probably about 30 children's books here that I now need to find a home for. I'm not quite sure what I do with them. They may end up back in this box just for a little while until I figure out what I'm doing because my bookcase is an absolute mess. I haven't filmed in front of it for quite a while as you've probably realised 
And the main reason for that is because it's such a tip. I've literally just grabbed hold of all of my Christmas books and put them on there. So all of my Christmas books are just dumped on top and then I've got books that I was sent to review and they're all in an order balancing on top of each other so that I know which one to do next and then I think I've just got random bits and pieces that I've just sort of popped on there as well. I just really need to sort it out. But yeah, I've really liked doing this kind of relaxed video actually. I have no idea how long this is going to be. I do apologise if this is like a 20 minute video because I have waffled on for a really long time. Knowing me it's probably going to be 40 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you read any of these books as a child then let me know if any of them were your favourites and if you want to suggest any more children's books for me to read if I do a children's 24 hour readathon then please suggest those to me in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you again next week with another video. Bye!